11 Palestinians were displaced, including uh, seven children. Now, it's, it's really scary living there. It's like living in the Wild West with no rule of law, nothing to protect you. Um, there's attacks all the time by armed Israeli settlers. During the last week of June in East Jerusalem, settlers assaulted, Israeli settlers assaulted seven Palestinians with uh, uh, their rifle butts um, and with clubs, including a woman and an infant. So, and, and of course, there's about 600 obstacles to freedom of movement uh, within the West Bank and the separation wall that Israel is building. Okay, having presented this somewhat um, depressing picture, um, I want to go on to the third part of my talk, which is um, what are some of the different forces shaping uh, the future um, of this conflict? First of all, we have the new Obama administration. Um, and of course, the Gaza attack happened what, before the Obama administration came in, but I think uh, really highlighted the need to, to have a settlement to this conflict. But I believe that uh, all, all the indications are that the Obama administration came in determined, I mean, he said so, he said as much, came in determined to see a resolution of this conflict within his first term, within his term of office, effectively. Why? Because this administration believes that it is actually a national U.S. security interest to resolve this conflict. Um, and if you want to find uh, out where they're getting the, uh, their ideas from, I would suggest that you read the Baker Hamilton Iraq Study Group uh, report. Um, I think that's had a huge influence on the direction of the policies of this administration. What this report said is that the U.S. can't achieve any of its objectives in the Middle East without um, tackling the Arab-Israeli crisis head-on. Um, to diffuse the ability, for example, of Al-Qaeda to capitalize on sympathies, uh, on, on pop popular sympathy throughout the Arab world and the Muslim world for uh, Palestinians, and to diffuse the, um, the possibility of extremist groups cashing in and, and recruiting members. Um, Resolving the conflict would enable uh, the United States to get out of Iraq and get out of Afghanistan much more easily, get uh, relations with Iran back um, onto a normal uh, working relationship, if not a, a, a bosom friendship, um, and it would diffuse support for resistance groups. So I think we're seeing in the Obama administration a determination to end and begin to reverse the Israeli colonization project in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. However, there are limits of what, on what uh, this means the Palestinians would, would get in terms of their human rights. And if you want to understand uh, what those limits are, then I would suggest that you see the report of the U.S. Middle Eastern Project, which is led by Henry Siegman and Brent Scowcroft. Um, the limits would be no right of return for the Palestinian refugees to what is now Israel. Um, instead, they would get compensation, and uh, some might be able to go to the Palestinian uh, state. It would be a two-state solution with a, a, a shared Jerusalem, a land swap to accommodate the majority of settlers, a demilitarized Palestine uh, with a U.S.-led um, uh, multinational force. Now, if we look at the role the U.S. is actually playing in the Palestinian territories now, it's not that positive. They're really building up a very strong uh, security force, Palestinian security force, but the aim of the security force is not to enable the Palestinians to resist what Israel is doing to them, but to control um, the Palestinian population. But in spite of these limits, these are important shifts that are happening um, in the U.S. Uh, uh, administration and are reframing the official U.S. discourse and are reframing uh, the media discourse. Now, if we look at uh, the role of the rest of the international community, they basically take their lead from the U.S. So, I mean, if the U.S. is willing to move now, they will move. Um, but otherwise, if the U.S. isn't willing to move, we don't see much movement from, let's say, the European, the European Union, or the United Nations, or others. Now, however, w given the U.S. leadership, I think you're seeing um, some European countries uh, speak up. Britain has been very vocal about um, the, the illegality of settlement products and cracking down 
on the sale of settlement products, uh, products that are produced in the illegal Israeli settlements in uh, Britain. Um, when Netanyahu visited Europe a few weeks ago, he was surprised that both um, uh, uh, Sarkozy and Berlusconi, who were seen to be uh, close friends of Israel, both said, look, you know, the settlements really have got to be frozen. So they came up with this strong message. Um, the U European Union has come up with a very strong statement uh, just a couple of days ago um, in which they say, look, basically, look, we're fed up for paying for Israel's um, colonization of the West Bank. The European Commission uh, pointed out, um, according to an Associated Press report, that Israel's settlement policy is strangling the Palestinian economy and making it extremely dependent on what? On aid. Who's giving most of the aid? The European Union. And they're tired of it. And they say uh, in their statement uh, on Monday, the Commission said, quote, it's the European taxpayers who pay most of the price of this dependence. I think these are new elements in the discourse that we're hearing. Um, but I think the bottom line is that the U.S. Uh, role is still very crucial. So even if the U.S. is weakened um, as a superpower, economically, uh, militarily, and politically as a result of a lot of the policies of the Bush administration, and in fact previous administrations, still uh, um, what the U.S. says goes as far as this conflict is concerned. And so that makes the role that U.S. citizens play um, even more important compared to uh, other parts of the world. Um, so what is happening at the popular level, at the level of public opinion? Um, not much of this public opinion is reflected in the media. Um, we're seeing some interesting uh, new uh, 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 some some reports that I don't think would have come into the media previously. Uh, like for example, there have been two reports, I believe, both in the Washington Post, um, that speak to uh, the role that U.S. Um, American Jewish uh, charities are playing in uh, subsidizing Israeli settlements. Well, these kinds of reports are pretty new. I don't think we would have seen them if there hadn't been a shift in in official discourse. But underneath the surface, uh, not that visible in the media, there's a huge change in public opinion which has been, which has been there uh, before Gaza, but which has been very galvanized by Gaza. Um, and it's reflected in the movement to impose um, a boycotts, uh, uh, divestment, and sanctions against Israel until it allows or upholds international law and until the Palestinians um, achieve their uh, human rights. So um, this boycott uh, movement, which um, has been underway um, since July 2005, actually the call uh, uh, by Palestinian civil society for boycott, divestment, and sanctions as nonviolent tools um, to, to secure Palestinian human rights was made on this day in 2005, July 9, 2005. And if you want to read that call, which I think is, is a highly significant call, you can find it on pacbi.org. That's um, uh, PACBI.org, that's the Palestinian Academic and Cultural Boycott. Um, uh, but uh, the, 